What is harder to bear? Criticism, which you believe to be unjust, of a spouse um, in the Oval Office, or criticism of a child Would in the Oval Office. Would you phrase that differently? Which I know to be unfair, not which I think to be unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, much harder, the son. Is it? And much much harder, harder, the father. <laughs> there you are. It is, really. really. Much harder, the son. I mean, when you're there, when you live there, you, uh, for one thing, you're not, you don't have time to read all the criticism, but uh, when you're watching from outside, it's very, very difficult, I think, to see somebody you love criticized. I never heard one bad word about Laura. I was ready to take them on. <laughs> <laughs> One bad <laughs> That was good. You were, you were both wartime first ladies. That must have, to some degree, redefined the job um, or, or the job that you expected to, to perform when you, when you went into office. How, how did it change your lives? Well, I remember when, uh, when Gampy was president and we lived in Dallas, I can still picture where I was standing uh, in our kitchen watching him announce that troops were uh, going to go in to take Iraq out of um, Kuwait and um, how worried we were and how nervous I was watching that. And then, of course, for us, you know, no we question. had September 11th, which was such, you know, the real tragedy, really, and, and then the other things sort of fallen on that. I, I think the, uh, I think George's war, my George's war, they're both my George's, but, <laughs> I, but I think my George's war was easier than George W's because we, the, 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 the missiles went in, they went around corners, they hit the targets, there, the war was over, once they started it, was over very quickly. I honestly think that George H.W. Bush taught the world how to keep the peace by ne negotiating. And I remember sitting at Camp David once when I heard George say, well, Francois, come on, tell vous his French is better than mine, but not much. <laughs> but, uh, and I, it suddenly occurred to me, George was calling every head of state to just check in with them and get, sort of get things in, he had his ducks in order. Well, there's an easier world than it is now. 9-11 changed all our lives. So George had a much, Laura had a much more difficult time. What can you do at times like that to provide support, to provide sustenance, to, to reassure? Stop me? nagging your husband for one thing. <laughs> I think just the ritual of daily life, I mean, the dinners together, the, um, you know, the girls coming home, and I, when I wrote my book, I looked back at my schedule and saw that Barbara and Jenna both came home for their spring breaks uh, right before we went into Iraq. They didn't go off to the beach or something, but they wanted to be with their dad. The other thing I saw looking at the schedule were a lot of our longtime friends, our lifelong friends, George's and mine, from Midland, who were in Barr's Cub Scout troop when she was the den mother, <laughs> also came to the White House. And then a lot of times when uh, times were tough, I know Marvin, our George's brother who lived there, uh, lives in Alexandria, would call and he'd just say, you know, let, I'm gonna come over, let's watch the, you know, what get, some game that they wanted to watch. And they would just watch a game all afternoon. And I knew there was just sort of this unspoken brotherly comfort for George to have his brother and his sister uh, both live near us in Washington. And it really ended up being great emotional support for our eight years to have Marvin there and Darrow there. 